Forever is a long time. Things wear out. So you're going to have to find new parts to replace the old parts. Today, if your heart or kidney or liver conks out, picking up a spare for a transplant depends upon someone else dying at just the right time. In the next 10 years, there will be a better way. We will grow our own organs in a lab from a tiny piece of our body. And instead of cloning it in a petri dish, we'll just fax it to ourselves from a sort of organic printer. Print on demand body parts? Wouldn't it be great if we can just have these organs ready to be made whenever you need them? Dr. Anthony Atala at Wake Forest University harvests organs, but they don't come from dead bodies. He builds them. He's pioneering the technology of duplicate, ready-to-install body parts, like this bladder or this heart valve, made from your very own body tissues. We can now take a very small piece of tissue, less than half the size of a postage stamp, and by day 60, we can have enough cells to cover a football field. That's a lot of cells. It's part of the regenerative medicine revolution, which explores new ways to replace old parts and greatly extend our lifespan. So how do you make an organ from scratch? You begin by building a precisely shaped frame in a process known as electrospinning. A magnetized spinning wheel teases tiny biodegradable fibers out of a thin jet of liquid collagen and wraps them into the desired shape, much like a cotton candy machine whips up an impressive wad of wonderfulness. By controlling the speed and other variables of the spinner, Anthony and his colleagues can shape a scaffold for body parts, like a blood vessel or a tendon that connects muscle to bone. Once the scaffold is built, it's seeded with organ cells and put in a bioreactor, a hermetically sealed cylinder that mimics the conditions inside the body. It's kind of a boot camp for new organs. The bioreactor forces a synthesized body part like this heart valve to work out and prepare itself for active duty in a real body. Anthony built his first bladder in 1998, and since then, he's put 20 more organs under his belt. Electrospinning is especially good for tubular body parts like arteries and veins. The most complex organs are the solid organs because they require a lot more cells per square inch than any of the other tissue types. But he's already mastered shapes as complex as a human ear. His current challenge is building organs that have intricate innards, like the kidney. Over 90% of patients waiting for a transplant organ are waiting for a kidney. And by far, the most complex organ is in the kidney. It has many different types of functions and it gets injured easily. So the challenge is, how do you make a new kidney? The answer might be bioprinting. The same kind of machine that churns out documents at the click of a mouse might someday print out the body part of your choice. Inkjet printers shoot out tiny droplets of ink that happen to be the same size as living cells. With the right kind of ink, so to speak, these cells harden into a hydrogel and are built up, layer by layer, into an organ-shaped scaffold, which is then shot through with living tissue. But instead of using ink, we use cells. And you can do this one layer at a time with a printer until you get your three-dimensional structure that's consistent with the organ you want to create. As with electrospinning, the scaffold is made of collagen, but it's seeded with particular cells of the desired organ, in this case, a heart valve. And the best part about these freshly assembled organs is that the body recognizes them as its own. One of the great advantages of uh, this field of regenerative medicine is that it can use the patient's own cells. And when you do that, there is no concern for rejection. No rejection, no problem. This technology is already commercially available. Dr. Steven Nichtberger's company, Tingion, has got the guts, if you will, to pioneer a service of tailor-made replacement parts. We actually have designed a manufacturing facility that has the ability to deliver custom-made organs for patients who need them. And soon, thousands of these patients will be able to send their tissues to us, and one at a time we'll be able to make organs for each of these patients and deliver it back to them. Now that's absolutely, positively cool. Soon, we could all cruise into old age just like a vintage car. With a constant supply of spare parts, we could keep on running almost forever. Forget the fear of discovering you have terminal heart failure. 
In less than 10 years, you could just order up a brand new ticker. Deal. The organ gets placed into the patient using the patient's own cells, no rejection, and that patient lives with that organ like if it were their own, their own original organ all over again. I don't know what's more sci-fi, organ cloning or suspended animation, mind mapping or memory engineering, living for eons as an avatar, or extending life through meditation practices that tap into the mysterious powers of the mind. The future of immortality is so close, I don't know whether we'll be the last generation to experience a normal lifespan, or the first to finally break through the barriers of disease, stress, and limited technologies to radically prolong life. Either way, it's an exciting time to be alive.